Hello everyone, a lot of people in my comments suggested that I start doing guides. The most requested one was a hammer guide. So I decided to work on it for my 1000 subscribers. This is a very exciting experience, since I've been a hammer main for over 12 years now. A little disclaimer before we start. This guide will not cover Impact Crater, for a few reasons. First, I simply did not play with Impact Crater since Sunbreak released, as I focused my attention on Impact Burst. The second reason is that Impact Crater spam playstyles are much more difficult to master, as they require extensive knowledge of monster openings and their stagger thresholds. Missing just one hit of an Impact Crater because a monster recoiled is a gigantic loss of damage, on top of using two wire bugs. It is a very inconsistent playstyle. This does not mean that you cannot use Impact Crater for big openings however, I'm not telling you to just not use it at all. But using it requires to switch scrolls if you also want to use Impact Burst. This guide will be focused on Impact Burst playstyles, which are much more consistent, easier to play, and are still very competitive compared to Impact Crater Spam. It is also not reliant on having three wire bugs at all times at all. Hammer is a blunt weapon that deals stun damage when you hit a monster's head. Hammer's moveset has a lot of commitment, lots of lengthy animations and recovery lag. However, despite what it looks like at first for beginners, Hammer is also blessed with one of the best mobility in the game to balance its slow moveset. Hammer is considered by many to be the most high-risk, high-reward weapon in the series, as it is constantly in the face of danger, literally. The reason why is because Hammer is pretty much only good if you are able to consistently hit a monster's head, which is the most dangerous spot on a monster to stay close to. Hammer is an extremely satisfying weapon to learn and use, because of its very high damage, high hit lag, variety of playstyles and ability to KO monsters. With a simple moveset, it is very easy to pick up, but difficult to master. Hammer is also possibly the best designed weapon in the entire series right now, due to a few factors. Hammer in Rise was the worst designed weapon in the series, because its moveset was incredibly weak and its entire damage came from spamming impact craters. But in the transition to Sunbreak, Hammer's moveset has been buffed tremendously. Hammer can now fully utilize its moveset to deal gigantic amounts of damage, with the help of Impact Burst, and no longer requires to spam Impact Crater at all. All playstyles with Hammer are viable. You can play Strength Hammer. You can play Courage Hammer. You can play Impact Crater Spam Hammer. You can play Basic Stance Hammer. Yes I am not kidding, even that, and I will prove it with a video I've recorded, soon. And finally, Hammer also possesses an incredibly well-designed weapon tree, with lots of viable craftable hammers, which I will discuss later on in this guide. This is a stationary combo for hammer. This is a combo you will pretty much never use. This combo used to be the strongest tool of hammer, and the combo you would use for large monster openings in previous games. But in this game, it is extremely weak. This is the second stationary combo for Hammer. It is a very long attack sequence that deals the highest possible damage Hammer can and should only be used for large monster openings such as KOs and topples. It can be stopped midway if you stop pressing the button if necessary. Keep in mind that using this move on no target will not initiate the combo. This is the bread and butter of hammer and what you will use constantly. Charging the hammer consumes a little bit of stamina, but allows you to stay on the move while waiting for an opportunity to release a strong charged attack. There are three levels of charge. The level 1 charge is a weak slap that you can follow up. I do not recommend using this attack at all. Charge level 2 and 3 are the most important. Level 2 performs an uppercut that moves you forward. It deals reasonable damage and has high stun value. This is usually the move you will use to build up stun on the monster. The movement also allows you to close the gap with monsters and snipe their head thanks to its great upward reach.
Level 3 is the Charged Big Bang. To perform it you must stop moving and release the charge button. It deals high damage and exhaust, but less stun. This is what you will use the majority of the time when the monster leaves itself open after attacking you. If you keep moving when charged at level 3, you will perform a spinning bludgeon instead, which is a very bad move that is difficult to aim and I highly recommend you never use it. It is important to learn that to perform a charged big bang, you must stop moving your character. While it can be followed up by a big bang combo after the golf swing, it is still not worth it. If you are in strength or courage mode, switching back to the basic mode puts you immediately in a level 3 charge. This is the most common way to use impact crater at full power. The Strength Hammer move set is accessed by pressing the charge button, then pressing the A slash B slash O button depending on your controller. Once you switch to Strength, it will remain until you switch again. Strength changes your charged attacks into more powerful versions of them. The benefits of Strength is that it deals much higher damage, but the moves will leave you vulnerable for longer. Strength Hammer should be used against monsters that take lots of raw damage to their weak points but lower elemental damage. X. 70 raw damage, 20 fire damage for Barriot's head. The level 1 charge of strength is a stronger slap with a stronger follow-up. It is a very situational move that I don't recommend using in neutral. The level 2 charge is a strong uppercut. It still closes the gap with monsters and has slightly more upward reach as well. The level 3 charge is the most important tool of Strength Hammer. Stationary releases charged Brutal Big Bang, the strongest hammer move after the Big Bang combo. With a gigantic 350 plus attack value if all hits connect and if impact burst is active, it is near 2000 or more than 2000 damage on monster weak points, and very high KO as well. One charged Brutal Big Bang is enough to KO most monsters immediately at the start of a hunt. Using this attack consistently on monster openings that aren't KOs or topples is advanced due to the very long and vulnerable animation, but the reward is very high. Releasing the charge level 3 while moving is step smash. This is one of Hammer's best moves and the one I recommend beginners use the most when monsters leave themselves open before they try to learn charged brutal big bang. Step Smash's damage is half of Charged Brutal Big Bang, but it is an attack with much less commitment and much better reach. Similarly to the level 2 charge uppercuts, Step Smash covers distance and closes the gap with monsters. Finally, keep in mind that rolling when you are charging your hammer resets the charge level back to 1. The Courage Hammer moveset is accessed by pressing the charge button, then pressing the A slash B slash O button depending on your controller. Strength and Courage are switch skills, so pick the one you want in your equipment box. Courage Hammer changes the way you charge your attacks. Charged attacks become fast chain charge attack combos instead of being one charge one attack like the basic charge moveset in the Strength moveset. The benefits of Courage is that while it deals less raw damage than Strength, it deals higher elemental damage and it leaves you much less vulnerable, with faster attacks that do not have as much commitment. It also KOs monsters relatively faster than strength due to the higher amount of attacks and hits. Courage Hammer should be used against monsters that do not take lots of raw damage to their weak points but high elemental damage. X, 55 raw damage, 30 fire damage for Royal Ludroth's head. Charge attacks for Courage function differently. Each charge attack is a level of charge for courage but each level of charge has its own levels of charge. For example, the charge level 1 is a slap. But this slap can be charged to level 2.
Now if we press the charge button again after releasing this slap, we access level 2 of Courage Charge, which is a quick uppercut, which can also be charged to its own level 2 to be stronger. I recommend reaching that secondary level because it deals more damage and charges much faster. Then if we press the charge button again after releasing this uppercut, we access level 3 of Courage Charge, which is a quick downward slam. But this one has no secondary levels. This is the end of the chain. Basically, to access stronger moves, you have to charge multiple times in a row. If you charge at level 1, you will have the slap and only the slap. Waiting for longer will do nothing. So you have to release it and press the button again to access the level 2 courage charge, the uppercut, etc. Courage is a faster hammer move set that allows you to take advantage of monster openings quicker than strength, with less damage but also less commitment. Less commitment also means higher mobility, especially with a little trick unique to Courage Hammer. Whenever you charge to Courage level 2 or level 3, it is possible to buffer a quick roll right after reaching the charge. This quick roll helps you for positioning and avoiding attacks and it will keep your current charge level. This only works if you roll immediately after reaching Courage Charge level 2 or 3. Rolling any time later than that will cancel your charge and you will be back to level 1 charge. One last thing. Every move hammer has can be followed up by a charge. Regular pounds, all charge attacks, big bang, can all transition into a charge when they are over. Side Smash is unfortunately completely useless. Water Strike is straight up an upgrade. Water Strike is Hammer's parry move. Unlike most other counters and parry moves in the game, the parry window of Water Strike is not immediately at the start of the animation right when you press the button. Instead, you have to use Water Strike a little earlier than when you are right about to get hit by the monster. The part of the animation where your hammer is in a downward motion is the entire parry window. Pressing the attack button after a water strike leads to a strong golf swing. You can also charge your hammer instead of using the golf swing by pressing the charge button. Better synergy with courage. If you use courage hammer, pressing the charge button right after this golf swing immediately charges your hammer to courage level 3. Water Strike has better synergy with Courage Hammer due to this. Be careful not to use Water Strike on attacks that have multiple hits or against monsters who will attack twice in a row, or you will often be vulnerable to the monster attacking you right after you've parried one attack. It is possible however to parry the first attack, then roll or use Keeping Sway to avoid the second. Spinning Bludgeon is a terrible move as discussed earlier in this guide. I really advise you never use this attack. Spinning Bludgeon Charge has an extremely small niche where it can be used to hit monsters before they're going to roar, and then using the charge switches iframes to avoid the roar. This is extremely situational and I personally have never experienced with it yet, as I find Keeping Sway or Water Strike to be better options to deal with roars. Silkbind Spinning Bludgeon is also unfortunately a very bad move. It takes very long to perform, has high commitment, and the damage is not worth all the trouble. It deals less damage than Charged Brutal Big Bang, which is faster to execute. Dash Breaker is also unfortunately a bad switch skill, due to Keeping Sway having much better utility. They both share the same idea. But Keeping Sway is better because it has invulnerability frames instead of super armor.
Keeping sway is a short dash in any direction you want that keeps your charge levels. The start of the move has a decent amount of invulnerability frames, which is extremely useful. Strength Hammer has better synergy with keeping sway. It is useful to avoid an attack or a roar, and then unleash a charged brutal big bang or a step smash on the monster. And finally, Impact Burst. Impact Burst is a self buff that adds follow up hits to your charge attacks that deal additional damage and KO. The buff lasts for 1 minute, which is huge for a self buff in this game. You should always use it at the start of a fight, and refresh it whenever the monster is KO'd or toppled. The follow up hits also deal mounting damage which can put monsters into wyvern riding state. Whenever a monster attacks, they leave themselves open and hunters can use these pauses to strike back. This is the puzzle nature of Monster Hunter, where players must analyze and learn the monster's moveset so they can use their own moves to counter-attack them. It is similar to a dance, even. This is even more true for Hammer due to how precise and slow its attacks are, and the fact that it must target the head. The best monster to train on when learning Hammer is Rathian. She has a stance that leaves her head low to the ground and wide open. She has a lot of sequences that leave her open to counter-attacks. Which moves you should use when the monster is open depends on how long the pause is. This is something you will have to learn by analyzing each monster's moveset. It also depends on what charge switch you are using, strength or courage. For strength, level 2 uppercuts are usually the safest attacks to use. They also build up KO fast. Step Smash is also great for its high damage and being safer than charged brutal Big Bang. Charged Brutal Big Bang is for big openings where you know you will have time to use it. Like I said earlier, this is a little more advanced. For Courage, it is a little less specific due to the nature of its attacks, which are all fast. You can chain Courage charge attacks on monsters for as long as the monster is open. Again, this is something you have to learn by analyzing monsters and judging how many attacks you can get on the monster's head before going back to neutral. Large monster openings are KOs, paralysis and topples. It is during these openings that you should use your Big Bang Combo. Big Bang Combo into Impact Burst Refresh is what I always use. For Courage Hammer however, you might have noticed that I sometimes use two Courage Chain Charge Combos instead of the Big Bang Combo. Level 1, Level 2, Level 3, Impact Burst, Level 1, Level 2, Level 3. Due to how fast a Courage Hammer consumes sharpness, I use this combo when monsters are toppled or could to put them into Wyvern Riding State faster. It is slightly less damage than Big Bang Combo, but putting monsters into Wyvern Riding State allows me to sharpen my hammer so I don't drop into blue sharpness, then resume the fight. It is sometimes worth it to use Charged Brutal Big Bang on toppled monsters so you can KO them, which then allows you to use Big Bang Combo. Let's get into the best hammers to craft. Abyssal Windstorm, the Gaze McGorm Hammer, is your go-to all-around hammer. It is the strongest hammer in the game right now, with high 340 raw and a stunning 80 hits of purple sharpness. This is the main hammer to use with strength. The downside of Gaze McGorm's hammer is that it has really bad negative affinity and no slots. So if you play without a fighter palico or a hunting horn user, then its bad affinity will eventually drag its damage down a little unless you can make a set with both Critical I-7 and Bloodlust 1. For Courage, Hammer is blessed with very good hammers that share similar stats for each element. Volcanic Impact, the Magmadron Hammer, 
for fire element, doomsday hammer, the Almudrin hammer, for water element. Skyfold Fury Slash, the Thunder Serpent Narwa Hammer, for Thunder. Flicker Blizzard Blow, the Aurora Canth Hammer, for Ice. And finally a tie between Crimson Forswing, the Crimson Glow Valstrax Hammer, and Dark Mort from the Death Stench Tree, for Dragon. These two are pretty much interchangeable, so use the one you prefer depending on your set and talisman. But Crimson Forswing looks so much cooler though. Finally, I've started experimenting with elemental hammers for strength. These are hammers I was able to make sets for that rivalize the Gazemagorm hammer and damage. Gazemagorm is still very slightly stronger, even into favorable dragon element matchups, but these add a little bit of variety, and I personally enjoy playing them a lot, as they allow me to make more layered sets and barely lose in damage. These hammers share similar stats. Their main strong stat is a natural 20% affinity, which allows them to stack lots of skills and don't require critical eye as much as the Gazemagorm hammer. I use Master's Touch with these hammers to keep the purple sharpness up. The first one is Rosen Unwetter, Espinas Hammer, for Fire Element, Enlightenment Hammer plus, Mizutsun's Hammer, for Water Element. Astalos Striker, Astalos Hammer, for Thunder Element. Aktung's Flick, the Gormegala Hammer, for Dragon Element. Ice is a little left out with no good options with natural affinity and purple sharpness, but the Lunagaran Hammer is a very strong option that looks promising with 320 raw and 40 hits of purple sharpness to make up for it. Some honorable mentions. The Fine Kimura Hammer and the Royal Order Hammer are very strong raw hammers with high purple sharpness, attack, great slots and 10% affinity for the Royal Order Hammer. They are very customizable and competitive hammers that can also rivalize the Gazemagorm Hammer. Diam Golgo's Phantasm and Devil's Die, the Camellius and Scorned Magna Milo Hammers respectively, are Poison and Blast options for monsters very weak to these statuses. The Abominable Avalanche, Goss Harag's Hammer, is a stupidly strong hammer with 350 raw, 10 hits of purple sharpness, and 31 ice. It might be a very good option for Strength Hammer and Ice Element matchups such as Rajong and Furious Rajong. And finally, the Furious Rajong Hammer, which has a distinct niche. It has excellent stats, but you'll notice it is the only hammer I've talked about that doesn't have a level 2 Rampage decoration slot. There are three monsters in the game that are not affected by any of the anti-species Rampage decos. Reikna Kedaki, Pyre Reikna Kedaki, and Gazemagorm. The Furious Rajong weapons can be used against these monsters, as they are almost as strong as Gazemagorm weapons but without the bad affinity. They also have lots of decoration slots. These are my sets. I won't go too much into detail because these depend on your talisman. My best talisman is an attack Buas 2, critical boost 1 with a level 2 slot from the base game. I still haven't got anything worthy of replacing this talisman in Sunbreak. Hammer's priority skills are Critical Hit Skills, Weakness Exploit, Critical Boost, and Critical Eye. Then Attack Boosting Skills such as Attack Boost, Dereliction, and Mail of Hellfire. Elemental 5 is great for Courage Elemental Hammers as well. Bloodlust 1 is an excellent skill that can free some decoration space on your sets because it gives you a massive 20% affinity boost. This is how I reach 100% affinity on my sets paired with 30% affinity from Critical I-6, or the 10% of Critical I-2 with the Strength Elemental Hammers I talked about. I do not find comfy skills necessary for Hammer due to it having two great defensive options in Water Strike and Keeping Sway as well as my personal skill and monster knowledge. But I would recommend Evade Extender 1 or 2 at maximum for beginners. Focus is a difficult skill to fit in at the moment until new decorations are added to the game, but it can be useful for Strength Hammer. Reaching Charged Brutal Big Bang Faster is very useful since it is the second strongest hammer move. Same goes with Slugger, which is very useful against afflicted monsters due to them having higher KO thresholds. The only hammer in the game that can allow you to fit Focus 2 or 3 or Slugger 2 or 3 into your sets is the Kimura Hammer for now. Exhaust is something I mentioned but didn't talk about much. Exhaust is the ability to fatigue monsters faster as you hit them. 
Hammer and Hunting Horn do this faster than other weapons. A special kind of stagger caused by exhaust thresholds exists when you hit monsters with Hammer or Hunting Horn. This exhaust stagger usually happens after monsters recover from a KO. You recognize it to the greenish drool coming out of the monster's face when you hit them. This stagger, like any stagger, is detrimental for Hammer and especially Strength Hammer, because it makes the majority of monsters recoil back, which can make you miss very powerful attacks such as Brutal Big Bang if the first two hits are what causes the stagger. I recommend you hit a monster a few times with faster attacks such as Step Smash or your level 2 uppercuts to trigger these staggers before you resume trying to get your most powerful and slow attacks in. This is a stagger that can be beneficial at times however. When fighting flying monsters such as Rathian and Rathalos, knowing that you are going to exhaust stagger them when they are flying will make you dunk them out of the air. Try to stay on flat terrain when fighting a monster. Charging your hammer while on a slope will initiate a slide which is just horrible to control and leads to the terrible aerial spinning bludgeon. It was much better in Monster Hunter World, do not use it here. This is not pictured here, but know that Water Strike can parry any move in the game, including unblockable moves, such as Rajong's Beam. Strength has a little trick when charging, though this also functions with a level 2 Courage Charge. When you roll with Hammer, you can immediately initiate a charge. But it is possible to make the charge instantaneous by keeping your movement stick in a direction and quickly releasing it when the roll is over. This is a difficult technique to explain but I hope I could make this as clear as possible with the clip. Thank you everyone for watching this guide. I hope it covered pretty much everything people were expecting. My channel grew extremely fast in just 3 weeks and now that I have enough subscribers, I can interact more with you guys with the community tab in a few days. I do not understand why it grew so fast, as I am a very modest person who doesn't parade my videos on websites and I am barely on social media, but I really appreciate a lot of the comments on my videos. This guide was a little rough to make because I do not have a lot of video making experience, but I hope you still enjoyed it, and that you learned something. And more importantly, I hope I inspired you to pick up and play Hammer. Until next time, and happy Ungavanka.